Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Backpacking Food 101. My name's Aurora. I'm with Latino Outdoors. I'm the San Francisco Bay Area Regional Coordinator. Thank you all so much for joining us for this Backpacking Food 101 presentation. Uh, this presentation is really in partnership and in collaboration with Heather uh, from Let's Go Outside, also Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District. And really the goal for this presentation is to have fun, <laughs> learn about preparing meals when you're planning your backpacking trips. Planning backpack tri backpacking trips can be really stressful. There's lots that goes into it, considering the location, considering permits, considering uh, gear, but really what we're all really excited about is the food. And it's what should be the most fun when planning backpacking trips really. So. Hopefully you all get to learn something new today, uh, have a different perspective on meal planning for backpacking food, uh, have lots of questions, let us know in the comments. We're gonna be monitoring those comments and answering them along the way and also have some time for after the presentation to go over some of those questions. But again, welcome and, and thank you all so, so much for joining us uh, let us know where you're tuning in from in the comments. We, we're super excited to, to know where people are tuning in from. You can share your name and the location that you're at. Um, this year is a really special year for Latino Outdoors. It's our 10 year anniversary. So we're really excited to be offering different ways of engagement with the community. I'm really excited about this presentation on backpacking food. Um, so really I'm gonna kind of be mostly behind the scenes. I'll be keeping an eye out for those comments. Uh, but we have Heather, which is a Latina outdoor recreation enthusiast and coach that is gonna be the expert for today and gonna be leading us in the presentation. So I'll let Heather, you can introduce yourself and kind of get started from there. Thank you so much, Aurora, for the, for the introduction. And, um, and actually you can, leading into this like i wanted to say thank you for having me i'm so happy to be here and as a reminder this is something that like it's a little bit daunting but it can be a lot of fun so we, let's start off and let me go share my screen let's go here share my screen um oh present okay here we go so backpacking food 101, backpacking meal planning, dehydrating food and more. And then for the introduction, my name is Heather Diaz. Um, like, like, I know it's from Let's Go Outside and some of my achievements. I have through hiked 2,600 miles of the PCT. And before that, I packed three times before that, believe it or not, it is possible. Uh, but with a lot of training preparation, um, I just completed this year. The last move of the PCT last week was 75 miles completely can say a backpack through California, all the way through almost Washington, through almost through Washington, I have like 30 more miles left to say I can do it there. But um, so I have a lot of recent experience regarding dehydrating food and backpacking food. So that's a lot of things are fresh in mind, which is why I really wanted to do this PowerPoint, but also it's kind of casual to conversational. And also I have my clients that should learn how to build their confidence outdoors by hosting informational leading like informational informational leading camping trips and women's only backpacking trips some took multi-day road trips within a few weeks some found new places to visit or cross off an item on their bucket list um or try something new and but for, for full time i am a communications professional and i spend my time my free time outdoor coaching and a little bit more about me, I'm born and raised in Houston, Texas. I'm an experienced long distance runner of 20 years. Um, you know, Houston's all we have, it's like flat. So like I got my change from that and kind of leaned into backpacking, which is really, it comes hand in hand. I'm a pound dulce addict and I am an outdoor recreation enthusiast. So let's go into uh, backpacking food 101. Okay, this is the roadmap we have. We're gonna go through, I want you to go through it. Uh, this is just, we're talking about intention setting, mindfulness, prep variations, types of backpacking food, and DIY dehydrating food. So we'll go all into this in a bit. Let's go. We have a lot of slides. We're gonna move pretty fast. If you have any questions, 
please ask and I'll try to uh, answer it on the way or at the very end of the converse of the presentation. So the first biggest thing is attention setting. This will help guide you, whether it's from being curious about just learning about backpacking, backpacking food to through hiking the PCT. So whatever it is, this is for you. And reasons that maybe you might be here. You might be, you might be curious. You might want to explore the variety of like options out there for backpacking food. Maybe you have there's dietary restrictions. Maybe you want lighter food options. Maybe you want to explore nutrient denser foods. Maybe you want to explore cheaper options. Maybe you're like a prepper, you want to prep. You know, just some people are like that. You know, no, no shame, it's all good. Um, I, any food I didn't use, I'm gonna say that for sure. Maybe they want to explore sustainability options. Plenty of things for why you may be here. But I always turn that for them. Maybe I just wanna have fun with backpacking to make it more fun, you know? Um, so just always remember that in the back of your head because it's all gonna lead to this. And then the next thing, reminder, um, but hacking food is whatever you want to make it, what makes you happy, what makes your gut happy, while well, being mindful of a few things is super important to remember. Because I, I, when I lead, when I've led that packing trips, people automatically think I must go to like the outdoor store to get my food. Like, no, 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 no. You can make it whatever you want and make it fun, and but you know, but, but still being mindful of a few things. And then look here. I have like Pringles right there. But like a canister is great for a trash bin. You know, carrying a Pringles can on the side of a water, like for your water, is not, not making me less of a hiker. It's actually, it, I, it's a trash bin and it's delicious. So <laughs> just a reminder. <laughs> so first of all, mindfulness. Okay, let's go into that. Very important after attentions. So one thing to consider too, is that when carrying food, is the refrigerator life? How you really have to think about how long will your chill food be at room temperature from fridge, freezer to consumption? It's really important to remember this because it kind of dictates like what you should bring. It's kind of logical. It's so kind of logical things. And I know it might be common sense, but sometimes people are just so rushed that they might not think about this. And it's okay. But this is me of reminding you about all these little things. Uh, two. Also something to note, fat cannot be dehydrated. It does not contain moisture. It provides an environment to grow mold. It can get rancid fast. This is important to remember. And you can even look up like shelf lives. Olive oil is two years, FYI. And bacon fat is one month. One month. I have some friends, my friend, she dehydrated bacon. She just literally placed the bacon on top of the dehydrator rack. And she ate it within two weeks. She said she didn't feel sick. So yeah, that can happen. Um, <laughs> things to consider. Um, fat oxidation starts with at room temperature. You got to keep dehydrated food frozen as long as possible. It's the best thing to do. If you do you have anything, make sure it's like stored somewhere you're going to bring on the trail. Make sure it's like stored freezer, refrigerator before you take it out. Um, and then if you have anything like, let's say, whether it's dehydrated on your own or whatever it may be, perishable items. It might take a couple of weeks to be noticeable or a couple of days. You know the food and how long it is. You can, you know, you can search all this, but you have to be mindful of that. And it's just really nice to have it something like you, you take it out of the fridge or the freezer as soon as you like the latest you can. Um, that's, and then this can go be doing like resupply boxes. This is something like really important to factor in. Um, okay. Other thing to consider. Dietary restrictions, you know, do you have nutrition goals, restrictions, allergies, sensitive gut, IBS, but this is something really important because you're going backpacking, like, and then, like, if you have anything, like, any, like, sensitive gut or, like, or IBS, like, this is the reason why my, like, my habits have changed because I'm out there, I don't want to have, like, any bad incidents out there, so I'm, like, always being mindful of things I eat. Um, as a runner, you always get told for races. If anyone's a runner, like you get told, don't eat anything you never, don't eat anything you never would eat the night before the morning of. Like that's kind of what the mindset I have for backpacking, because the same thing, you know. No, like you, you, it's something that gets helpful. I mean, like it's something if you can have things, it's good to have that in, in mind. I didn't think about that at first, so if you didn't either, it's okay. Five time, time is so valuable. Like you got to factor in time to shop, time to food prep, time on the trail, and amount of food meals needed for like you need, like if you go out 
skinny meals for like all day, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and breakfast. Like how many times we're going to out there? Like when are you starting? You know, um, and then also one of my favorite things to do is like evening overnight. Sometimes if I don't have much time, I just want to get out. Actually, like I, I just go, I, I just leave. I got two o'clock, especially in the summertime. And then I get to a campsite and all I already ate breakfast and lunch. All I had to do is eat dinner and then I get up and then I go have breakfast. That's it. Like you're only two meals. Cause I might not have time to prep. I just want to be out there. I just want to have fun. So that might be a time to think about like, what can I, what do I do is, you know, so there's always options and time from fridge, freezer to room temperature to eating perishable food. These are things to consider time. And then also I think is functionality is like the weight. Is this really like worth carrying? Um, the ease of use that's like cooking, like prepping, all that storage. How does it store? You know, also fire restrictions. Like that's really important. Like, can you actually like cook? Because some some places, like um, I know for sure, Big Sur. That's one of the places that sometimes they don't even allow you to bring stoves. So can't even you bring a stove or certain type of? Some of them only require certain like uh, fuel. I know some people have those like stoves that just put like six in the bottom. A lot of places don't allow that. Always check the fire restrictions. And fire permit, is it required? California would require to have a fire permit if you're gonna have a fire in the back country. And that includes a camping stove. You need to have a fire, but do you have that? Can you get it? And then water availability on the trail. If there's no water, like, you know, if you bring extra water for the dehydrated food, a pound, a liter of water weighs 2.2 pounds. At that rate, like you're taking water out and then you put in, you're carrying that water with you. You might as well just like don't dehydrate and just eat it and enjoy it or bring a slice of pizza and then tell me and share it with me. You know, <laughs> also fuel available for stove use, even have fuel. That has happened to me before. And I'm like, I don't have fuel. Do I have time to make it to Ariana get fuel? Even that, like sometimes the fuel are like sold out. So make sure like you call ahead and make sure they have fuel because I didn't include that because once, they didn't have fuel and they said, oh, we just got some like, and they will hold it for you. Pro tip, REI will hold fuel, stove, fuel, fuel for you if you call ahead because they do sell out. So I did that before and the guy was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll save it for you. How many cans do you want? I'm like, like really? Like, are you really asking how many cans I want? I'm like, three, four? <laughs> I'm like, what is this? But yeah, go ahead, do that. So um, if you have time to go to store for your uh, future, so recap mindfulness. You want to be remember. We want to be mindful of refrigerator shelf life. Remember that fat cannot be dehydrated. It's an environment to grow mold. Fat oxidation starts when at room temperature. You want to be mindful of dietary food restrictions, time, and functionality. So boom, mindfulness really important. It's whenever intentions mindfulness. Now let's go into backpacking food and prep variations. This is super basic, y'all, but still I wanted to go over this because it's so important as we dive deeper. Okay, so there's two different types. It's called stoveless. It's actually backpacking lingo. So people can go stoveless in their stove. Pretty simple. Stoveless is pre-packaged. Like you store bought, you can like have whatever you have of your own. It could be cold soaked, add water, believe it or not. There's people who would go on and on about being stoveless. And these people are like, sometimes they just enjoy it. Some of them are super ultra lightweight. They're like, you don't need a stove. I don't want a stove. I'm saying a stove is too much weight, blah, 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 blah. And they go on and on and they really enjoy it. It's like good for them. But also kind of cool to know that even though you don't have a stove, like you can still backpack just because you don't have that piece of equipment, you can still go out there. So just FYI, as a reminder, and there's also this having the stove. You can add for dehydrated meals on hot water or you can get pan cooking too. And add the ingredients, but yeah, so there's two basic things I know, but stoveless is a real thing. Some people would vouch and talk on and on about it, but if that may make them happy. That's awesome. I prefer so, but, um, and types of foods, this is kind of, you know, simple, like prepackaged food, just in case. And the reason why I'm going over this is because a lot of times when I go backpacking, people would forget like the basics, what you can bring. It's just, they just think you have to get this like dehydrated meal from the outdoor store. Like you can like bring so much, you can bring the rainbow. My goal is to bring the rainbow out there. Like all the fruits, you can do veggies, whatever you can. And also it's, I feel like amazing. Like I feel like the, all the energy and I feel like so alive and just so 
like ready for the day. And prepackaged food can do like takeout leftovers. That's my favorite when I am low on time. I have carried out pizza before because we ate tons of pizza and we were like backpacking PCT and we ordered pizza and then we took, we got the, we got like the other half of the pizza we didn't eat. We put it on the top and then we were eating it on the bus. <laughs> and then we took a, we hiked in like two miles and we ate the rest. It was really amazing. I love pizza on the trail. And then he has fruit, veggie snacks, you know, like chips, sweets, whatever, candy. I love all that. Like you're burning so many calories. Enjoy those sweets. Got some cheese, salami, tortillas. For cold soap, you can get like, you can do dehydrated meals like oatmeal. Dehydrated oatmeal, it's so good. I don't know why it's so good for me, but it's my favorite. And then even the instant packs, like if you, you know, like a, you can actually, there's a, the instant packs, you can actually pour water in the pack itself. There's actually a light, but it's pretty cool. And they can do, you know, uh, soup and ramen. I'm people who swear by that. So it's all about what you want, what interests you. And then for like the stove, you can just add hot water. There's so many different options. You can go to the grocery store and get like ramen, instant mashed potatoes. Like those, that by the way is really awesome. It's called a ramen bomb. It's really, really good. High calories, super sodium. Great for get like jet for jamming pack the calories on a budget. And then for the, or you can get prepackaged, you had complete meals in the bag. You really want to. That's your jam. You have time. You want to go that, go that route, go for it. So many options, so much, so much to choose from. And then you can do pan cooking. People have done that before and they really enjoy that. Like have as much fun as you want out there. And like we even like made quesadillas too on the pan. That was a lot of fun. Um, my, my, and that was a lot of, I actually really love quesadillas on the trail. It makes a flour tortilla, some refried beans and cheese, chef's kiss. And then um, <laughs> I'm getting hungry here. I don't know about you. Anyways, the next thing is a California campfire for a man. I got to like slide this in. I have to. Okay. This is like directly from the, the site. This is why it's in quotes. You have to have a campfire permit in the state of California if for open fires such as campfire, barbecues, and portable stoves, stoves on federal controlled lands and private lands that are property of another person. So you have to have this thing. It's super important. In some places, they ask you for that. Like Big Sur, they will ask you if they have your permit. And, um, and there's a website called permit, you can thought permit qualifiers, ca.org. You can look it up and you just do it once a year. It's mandatory. It's simple, easy quiz. But as a reminder, police always check fire restrictions and permit requirements. Some places they might not, not allow a stove at all. That has happened in Big Sur. And that I know my friend has happened in Point Reyes. And like, the thing about it, when you're like in these far out places, like you might not have signal and you like you don't have a per you might not have have a stove and all you have is like like so stuff like we're not a stove like that dehydrate like what are you gonna do where are you gonna drive what store you don't have a signal to find out where you have that's why also it's always good to have a nice blend of dehydrated foods and regular foods so you don't have any re rely on water uh, but still like check that always do always call the rangers if you need to like there's there should be information up there have to go that route because <laughs> my, my friend she remembers that story and that for a big story I completely changed her plan for I guess we we're just eating tortilla salami and cheese tonight and <laughs> coming in late and this is the website for the California um, campfire permit it's right here you'll go to the one the website and it has like the video and you can click click get your permit and then um, you actually have the uh, fill out the permit applicant information please do that if you're ever going backpacking in California, tell your friends. Um, and then, okay, now going backpacking types of food, I'm gonna get a little bit more into this, okay. Um, so this is like really basic. It's really conversational, as I mentioned before. So there's like, to me, in my mind, there's like leftovers, grocery store food, great for snacks, and dehydrated food. And we're gonna go into this. There's prepackaged at the grocery store, backcountry prepackaged meals, and DIY meals for dehydrated food. So this is supposed to be entertaining. You can laugh. <laughs> okay, so leftovers, my favorite of all food. It takes like no prep time. It's just the time from fridge to trail. You just eat within a few hours, occasion. You little to no time to prep, knowing despite the added weight, it is supposed to be consumed quickly. You know, you can get pizza, other half of the Subway sandwich. I would, my favorite thing is that if I do backpack later on, I get a, get a sandwich 
and you get you get the whole thing and then you eat the first half for lunch and you see the other half for dinner boom you're full and you don't have to do anything you can love their tacos you can get gas station chicken tenders that you didn't finish for lunch okay i swear like there's some it's like there's one that's really really good i would do that <laughs> if i was in the area oh and it's like has a lot of sodium so it's great for hydration and whatever you ate last night you didn't finish like we have made pizza before intentionally i love pizza as you can tell and then um we need an extra to bring the next day it's like it's you can it's believe it does it make you less of a hiker if anything you're gonna come and people are gonna be like, what's that smelling so good? And they're gonna be like, why do you, if you were friends with, why do you tell me? I'll be like, why do you tell me you're gonna go in for this? Cause I would have like, told, I would have told you my order so we could have brought the same thing. So, um, so you will be ahead. Um, and, and also store brought food. So the reason why I go into this, cause a lot of people are saying you have to get the, the food from the outdoor store. You can make this as fun as possible. Um, you can get like, and then the prep time, it's like less than five minutes. Time to bridge to trail with eat with a few days because you know, you got from the store, like, you know, leftovers, it's like you have to consume it pretty quickly. Uh, occasion is like for store brought food, maybe a little time to prep on a budget, willing to add extra weight in exchange for good food. Type of meals you can find like at Safeway, whatever, or your Lucky's or Rayleigh's, whatever it is up there. They can get ramen and some mashed potatoes. The, um, salami, cheese, tortillas, tuna packets, oatmeal, palm dulce, you can bring that. I brought that so good. Um, pouched beans, pouched rice. They have that in the back, even at REI. Um, and then you have snacks, chips, candy, crackers, peanut butter, fresh fruit, granola, protein bars, cookies, brownie, chocolate, chocolate. Whatever that you're interested in, you can bring it. And this is me with my talk, eating my taco. I, um, we do have a giveaway coming up and like with the dozen cousins refried beans like they're it's so good but like i actually made that with the stove and it was really good i was really happy the night before um hiking up backpacking hiking up half down and that uh, did fuel me up to tortillas beans and cheese chef's kiss <laughs> always great fuel to hike out and then um also hydration electrolytes can't forget that and then the other picture here is that i have my um, some people there have the pan dulce. They really love that in the morning. It's really great in the morning and with coffee. So good. It powers you for to, to hike back out. Um, and then the next one too is dehydrated food from like um, from the store. So this is like you might work at the grocery store. So I'm actually messed that messed that up. Well, it's, it's all good. I actually got that right. Okay, so prep time: a minute to five minutes. And I wrote minutes, minute. It's all good. Uh, time for fridge and trail. We eat within a month or year, whatever the expiration date is. Occasion, a little time to prep, and you want to be a little bit more conscious of the backpacks we. So, example, you can get ramen, some mashed potatoes, oatmeal, and some mac and cheese, dried eggs. You can even get dried eggs, believe it or not. And the outdoor store might get the instant meals in the back. There's so many different options. They have pack, Thai, noodles, mac and cheese, fried rice, curry, risotto, scrambled eggs, whatever, whatever you can imagine visit your local outdoor store they have so many different types of meals out there and you just it's, it's it's fantastic they have that option so that's just something that you can have it's like pick your choice what you want and what and what on your budget and what you what you prefer um and then there's also dehydrated food to eat make it yourself and this can take a long time like it might take 10 60 minutes to prep and 4 to 12 plus hours to dehydrate and then the time for fridge to trail can be even a few days weeks even a year too you can like look up the shelf life and occasion lots of time to prep maybe you're on a budget you're willing to add a um uh add extra weight in exchange for good actually i need to delete that so you can delete that extra part because <laughs> it's actually lightweight food this is me trying to finish this presentation in between my backpacking trip um and then meals like you can make like you know we can make a uh, mexican rice that's one of my favorites stuff at rice here but i love mexican rice uh it's so good on the trail mac and cheese pasta ground beef with breadcrumbs or beans um beans too i, I love beans so much on the trail it's so it has so much protein um jerky snacks fruit i love dehydrated fruit i make my own blend I made it so, so good. I had like mango, frescas, strawberries, blueberries, mangoes, bananas, strawberries, bananas are just magic. And like, I feel so good. Like I, 
told myself with this backpacking trip, I was never, I'm not gonna bring any candy. I love candy so much. I was like, fruit is my candy. And I survived and it was really good. I felt like it was, I loved all the vitamins too, the flavor, it was perfect. Like, and if you have time for that, it's like really simple too for fruit, um, if you ever do that. Um, Cause it's like, there's not really any cooking. You'd be just like preserving it um, with some citric acid. There's like, you can read that online. And also you can do like hot sauce too. I really wanted to. I've seen that before. The, the, the options are endless. So food recap, cooking types. So you got a stoveless and you got your stove and, and then you have the types of food. There's like your leftovers, grocery store food. Um, and then you have your dehydrated food, um, which is prepackaged at the grocery store, backcountry prepackaged meals and do it yourself meals. So that's a lot. So um, we're getting pretty fast. Okay, here, why do you, uh, why DIY for your dehydrated meals? So that's a good question, you know, what would be the purpose of this? So um, just DIY dehydrating food 101, look at the benefits. Um, we're gonna go over this, these items, the benefits, the reasons why you wanna dehydrate food, the prepackaged store versus outdoor source is very simple, but I just kinda wanna still go over it. And prepackaged versus DIY, DIY foods, tools needed, and resources. We're going to that pretty fast. I'm really happy with this. Um, okay, so some of the benefits you might have is you might have a wider like, variety of choices. And that's my favorite thing about it. And it might align with your dietary restrictions or your goals. I love that. For me, I, I need like all like, dietary restrictions. I need all the protein, need all the iron. Like, I want like all the vitamins to keep me fuel, especially when you're going for longer days in the summertime and it's hot. You're like, I need, like, I need everything and I feel the difference. I really feel it. So, it's, it'd be really great for even longer days, longer treks, you know, lighter pack weight. And there's health benefits, like nutrient dense, more satiable because they feel more filling. Sometimes with the other ones, it is, I feel like I get so bloated with all the sodium. You know what meals there are. And I just feel like I just poof up. And then, so this one is just, I just feel like full, happy. I can just fall asleep so good. Maybe cheaper, maybe more sustainable, environmentally friendlier, more. There's like a lot of benefits, benefits to this. Of course, it all relates to time too. Um, so like, you know, and after that, now we're gonna go into like the purpose of cooking instant foods and dehydrating it. Cause I know that's a question. Like, for example, like with dehydrated like there's instant rice. Like why would you cook instant rice, right? Like how does that make sense? But it actually does break down faster. Um, it really does. And there's even videos online that will show you people who are cooking instant rice and dehydrated instant rice. And it goes faster and it saves time and saves fuel. And this matters a lot when you're really hungry at the end of a hike. Also, I didn't include here, but when you're at higher altitude, like I was backpacking in the Sierra, like it requires, at a higher altitude it requires a longer time to boil. So like it can take you a lot longer to do that. And then you're like, you need, like your, your fuel can can only go, can go so long because you're way out there and you don't, might not, if you're out there for a few days and might have, not have access to get it as fast because it takes like, you know, it could be, within 30, 50 miles from civilization. So you wanna save your full fuel. Um, and then I'm this type here, you can combine with pasta, other ingredients can be a complete meal. Um, that's my favorite thing too. Like you can just combine everything and be like one big meal. Uh, I know some people that might like dehydrate, like just pop pasta and dehydrate the sauces separately. So then they can just mix and match like the, whether it's the stuff with the back and cheese and then tomato sauce, the same pasta, that's an option. Or you can just dehydrate together and just have one meal. I like the one meal option, but everyone has their own like methodology to this, which do whatever makes you happy and whatever makes it easier for you. That's always think about. Um, and then also the things I want to include about food considerations. Please consider sharp edges when it comes to storing in bags. You eventually have to get all this, you know, put it in a bag. You can vacuum seal it to make it make sure it takes all the oxygen out. But like like the, you, if you do pasta, shell pasta would be the best one to go to because it's least likely to break the bag, especially with vacuum sealer, sealing. I um, didn't do that last time because there was a sale and it was like, 
I think once it was like 25 cents a box of pasta or maybe like 75 cents. So I just, everything was gone. So I took the sharper edge. I didn't care. <laughs> I was, I'm thinking what was a 25 cent deal. And, um, but knowing that I, I don't have to like, I'm going to eat it. When I took it out of the freezer, I'm going to eat it the next few days. It's not the end of the world. I won't actually vacuum seal it. I would put it in a resealable bag. But you know, like you got, I mean, just if you can shell, be nice. And then rice gets really pokey too. Um, I just put that in my little bag. I, I did Mexican rice. I love Mexican rice on the trail, but it's like fried rice. So it has a lot of oils. And despite, I tried vacuum so it didn't really work out <laughs> as well. I did even like meal myself like Mexican rice and it was fine for like two weeks. I, when I picked it up to Wallowing Meadows, that one did not last, but I did mail it was outside for like three weeks. So I was happy to report back that if you eat Mexican Mexican rice can probably stay. If you do it right, you can probably, it will be good within two weeks of uh, taking out from the freezer. So happy to report that <laughs> Don't get sick. Um, you can test it on yourself, everyone's different. And then consider dehydrating sauces separate to mix and match, up to you. You can bind it all together, just whatever that. Just do whatever that makes you happy, whatever makes you feel that's right. Because with anything regarding about packing, or hiking, everyone's gonna tell you like the one thing that they love to do and they will swear by it. They're like, you gotta do this, this, and that. And it's just everyone like things functions differently. And like for me, like I I, I um I got that tip regarding separating the, the food and the sauces. Think about it. Like I just when I'm done hiking, I'm just tired. I don't have time to combine things. And then there's a lot of bags everywhere. So to make it as simple as possible, like one bag, because I I, I don't want like tons of plastic bags around. So maybe that's good for like, you know, road tripping or just camping in general, but for the sake of just simplicity and plus I'm just, I just, it's sometimes it's just so tired just to cook food at the end of the night. I just want one thing in a bag and that's just it, but do whatever that makes you happy, what works for you. Everyone just has their own ways and just um, listen if people have anything else to say, but you don't have to follow that. Um, you can just do, but do what you like to do. So this is also a very basic thing that prepackaged store versus outdoor store. Um, basically the outdoor store dehydrated meals, you have a whole entire like meal in a bag. It might be pricier, but it's a convenience that you like and time put into it, creating a whole entire meal that you're paying for. So some meals can be like, I see them for like six, $8, $10, $15, and you're paying for like the convenience, like that careful, like thought into this. Um, and that's what you're paying for. And that's just the standard. And then uh, maybe you have, maybe that's what you want and you need, cool, get it. And there's stuff like grocery stores, you can get that. And but usually the one you get at the grocery store, like instant mashed potatoes and more like a side, it's not really like a full meal, but people do eat the instant ramen, mashed potatoes together, ramen bomb as a full meal. It's actually really filling. Um, but you know, but, but it gets a lower cost, you know, and uh, it's more accessible. Like if you have like no time and you just gotta get out there, if that's what you have to get, like, go get it. Like, it's better to have food than, like, no, like, better to get what you can for a time. It's all about, it's like, time is a really big factor into this. And, um, and if, yeah, time is a really big factor to this. But, you know, don't have to overthink about it. Just want to go over that. Some people, like, really think there's only one way to eat. And other thing, you, there's so many different ways. And just, it's so much fun to explore and get curious. And it's pre-packaged versus DIY. The pre-packaged dehydrating meals is a meal that price low to no prep. You know, it might cost a little bit more because of convenience, but when you do it yourself, it requires a lot of time, effort, planning prepared to prepare. You have to dehydrate it in the store by being mindful of the limited shelf life. It's a lot of work, but to me, it's very rewarding. Um, and it is like a lot more, like it's a lot cheaper because I made meals for the trail. Like I'd say it's me and my husband, I'd say like I needed five meals, right? And uh, each, that's like 10 meals together. And then if it's a meal like $15, that's like $150. And then plus taxes and probably get other snacks. It'd be like 200 because I had like snacks and stuff like that. I've been $200. I did like, I got stuff at grocery outlet like ground beef. It was like, you know, $6 a pound for ground beef. I got some like my beans, beans, you found beans and rice together for like $6. Just like beans and rice. I know, but you can't complain if you don't do it. Yes, you have to pay for it, but I was like, I'll just make this on my own because rice is really cheap, beans is really cheap, so let me just make it on my own. I had the time. And yeah, it, we saved a lot of time when it's just two people for a lot of days. Like, it really, it does help a lot. And even with the fruit and stuff like that, but it all comes down to, like, it's like, that what, what time you have, the interest you have, 
And for us, it's like, because we were hiking a lot of miles and we we're in the Sierra, like you want to be as light as possible and we'll have like be fueled up so we can make it through each day. And that protein dense and all the flavor of the rainbow really did help because uh, we, we hiked a lot. I was really proud of myself. Um, and anyways, tools needed. So uh, tools needed, it's really simple, you know, a dehydrator or some like for Amazon. I got mine in like, like on, online. Um, I think it was like, this was like 2017. I was like, it was like 40 bucks. It might be a double the cost how it is now in days. But I think I sell it for like 60 bucks now. Um, uh, you can get one, but there's some, it's really cool. They have like an air, your air fryer might have a dehydrator. You should check on that because I know some, one of my friends, uh, she had been backpacking with me. She went home, we talked about this and she went home. She was like, my air fryer has a dehydrator. It's like, I don't have to buy it. So she's like, and now I'm gonna have a lot of fun. And there's some devices they have like that air fryer dehydrator conventional oven and everything to combine together and once someone asked me about like buying dehydrator and specs and i was like, get i was like if you need something that has like everything then get something combined together that makes sense um you know if i i saw like i i really like the new ones that has like everything i was like if i didn't have anything i would just get everything because it's just one machine because you know you don't want all these one-offs all over the kitchen you know like the uh kitchen countertop Cause, you know we live in the bay area are you in the bay area we have limited like surface areas so you go on everything to be like one device if you can <laughs> also limited space to store things so if it's one device even better um you also you can use the oven like there's some oven recipes it's not the same i think it's a different terminology for it um i think it's like oven I forgot what it's called it's, I, but you can do in the oven just i would research that and also know what the lowest temperature your oven can go to, just so you can cook as best as possible. But you can use your oven. The only downside is like your oven, and it's like you. I think it's to have a little cracked a little bit, so you want the moisture to escape. You don't want it to like, because you want the air to be, the water to be out, and you can't do that if it's like shut closed. Um, and then you need like an option of vacuum sealer. Anyways, yeah, and you need bags or jars to store dehydrated food. You need that too, because you got to put it one way or another. And if you are a jar collector like me, like you collect like that pasta jar you just used, wash it out, dry it, and you can store fruit in it and whatever else you're gonna need. I have a bunch of jars that I probably can get rid of, but I still keep, so perfect time for storing. And you can put it like in the freezer or keep it airtight depending when you need it, um, store it somewhere dark, and then optional, a vacuum sealer. And it's great for foods that are more likely to rinse it quickly like meat, I always do that. Sometimes I just throw things in the freezer and then vacuum seal it later when, before I go. Um, that can work too, but just that's just helpful. And like our neighbor gave one to us. It was like, I found out it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. I was like, that's all it costs. And it was really simple, not fancy. I was like, it's all we need. It was like, boom, sold. Like, well, not sold. She gave it to us. I got the bags. So like it was, I, I wish I'd known earlier, would have gotten earlier, but I never needed it before. But um, so it's really cool. You know, you can have that on the list if you're excited. And then I'm going to helpful tips. Okay. So I've wrote down a lot. Okay. So um, helpful tips here. So uh, you would, um, I would, when doing dehydrating food, be consider the weather. If it's hot, like um, the parentheses is missing. Obviously you did this kind of recent. Um, dehydrate in the evening or early morning. That's something like really, really important to realize because it can make your kitchen really hot. Um, and one thing I did is that like for wet packing, Recently, I dehydrated food like right before the trip because that's when temperatures cooled down. Like, I intentionally like did it so it was cool, and it was like the highs like and like it was weird like in the like seventy nine or whatever. Like, I was like, okay, I'll take it. I dehydrate my food because the key thing I didn't list it here with the trays. You would like to rotate the trays. Um, we have a dehydrator and to rotate the food, like flip the food over to so make sure both sides are are like are evenly dehydrated and for that reason like it takes more time to dehydrate overnight because you are not up and like changing out the trays every hour or flipping it so like so this is why it gets kind of tricky but for me i'm like if it's hot i'm just going to if i need to dehydrate overnight i'll do it overnight and it might just take a little bit longer um and then also be considering at the time when combining ingredients it may take longer like like pasta and with the with the red sauce, pasta sauce takes a lot longer because it's both combined. 
But you know what? I want it both combined and, and it's okay like with dehydrating food. I'm not listening here. I'm just going to keep adding like to this, um, that like, I always look online for like temperatures for like fruit and tines. And if it lasts, like if you have to dehydrate longer, um, like for example, like it, it's okay. It's okay. You just, the biggest thing is that when you dehydrate food, you want it to be uh, dehydrated at what you want it, that it should be for you. And even like I didn't include this here for like fruit, fruit you want it to be thinly sliced. So it's, it's so it's easier and faster to dehydrate because thicker slices, it would make for fruit. It makes it like takes a, it's a lot more water in between. So you want like thin slices. So if you don't do the thin slices, it may take longer and it's okay. It's always okay if it takes longer, except when you're running more, like low on time. Um, and then, oh, another tip I didn't include. I am bringing in all this recently. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, there's even a thing with like, for fruit, with fruit, um, there's an option you're quite familiar with, the freeze dry fruit. So there's like a thing I read online that with uh, make for dry, dehydrating fruit faster, this goes with like berries because berries have that thicker coat. It's really hard to dehydrate. I actually try to slice it. It was really interesting um, doing that, slicing each blueberry. But one easier way you can actually put the fruit in the freezer, right? And then take it out of the freezer. And then I'm sure if you use, like you let it sit out or you can just put it, I'm sure you sit it out and then you put it in the dehydrator. But when you freeze it, it actually helps like break down like the coating. So it's easier to dehydrate. That's why you always see freeze dried fruit, that label, because that's what they do. They put it in the freezer first and then they dehydrate it. So that's like a faster way to do it. If you don't do it that way, it just takes like, out, like extra hours to do that. And I didn't do that. Cause I was like, that's an extra step I don't want to do. I'm just going to do that. I mean, maybe next time I try it out, but that's something really cool. I'm so happy to share that. I just remember that cause I just remember looking at that up. And then also, um, um, for like fat, so I'm going down the list now. Paper towel, a towel pat, any excessive fat to reduce, to reduce the fat. I do that with my ground beef because I cook it and it has a lot of feet. You want to get the, the leanest type of cut. So that actually goes with like fat in general. It's not like listed here, but with fat, if you have like cuts of meat, especially for like jerky, um, you want to make sure you cut all the fat out. And that includes ground beef. You want to pat down all the fat and it's kind of gross. You can do like paper towel or towel. I did a tech of like a towel before, regular towel, because I find it so wasteful. And I just pat it down as much as I can, just so we don't we want to get all the oils out as much as possible to prevent getting rancid. So it's really important to know, like, cut out all the fat. I went over that at the beginning, but just remember that. And then uh, and then I have, um, and immediately freeze anything that has any fats and oils as much as possible. And, and then if you have longer backpacking trips, eat those fattier ones like first like so when you first went out we ate mexican rice first the first night because that was the one that could likely go bad and it was in a, so that was the one we do so you kind of be more mindful for that don't save it for last so kind of going through a, a lot of this and more tips consider having a blend of soapless and stove food because because of the please consider that i uh, always try to be mindful of that because um of the water situation because you don't know if you have water in the future just nice to not rely on it Maybe a little bit heavier, but it's good to have a good mix of it. Um, and then also sometimes like for lunch, like I get so lazy, I don't want to cook and it's kind of maybe kind of hot. That's when we cook, we actually eat like our, our tortillas and meat, meat and cheese. It's really nice to have because um, we just, we just tired. We just want to take a break. Well, I don't want to cook. I think we all feel that sometimes. So, but dinner makes, yes, makes sense. But for lunch, we get kind of lazy, but, um, but still like, it's good to have a nice blend. Um, and then adjust your hiking schedule depending on water availability, the food you want to carry. Like I mentioned this before, like for backpacking food, like it might seem like a lot to prepare all this, but this is like so much or overwhelming for you. You don't have to start at 8 a.m. If you're just backpacking for a night, you don't have to start at 8 a.m. And then, for, you know, make sure you have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You might have made things easier for you, depending also on the weather. I do know that sometimes it's either early in the morning or evening, depending on how fast you can hike, location, altitude everything and there's a way if you, if you if you know for sure you can like leave later and um like get there later so you can just be concerned with one meal it's always an option but that but you know who you are you know your skill set you know your abilities um i would consider that for routes that you already been you were kind of already familiar you just want to get out like that's really crazy i just want to get out and backpack you know that's what we did at big sir we're like we're just gonna haul 
you just hurry up and get up and up, get out. Cause it's a big sir if you've been there. It gets really hot and it goes straight up and it's like a challenging hike. But that was one for sure where you're like, you either have to get there early in the morning if it's like in the summertime or like towards the evening because the sun's right at you. And we're like, hey, we're going to start a five and we're just going to like kick butt and just like hike really fast because I only want to carry one meal. <laughs> and there's no soaps allowed. But something to keep in mind. So just, but have fun with it. Don't like be, will this be a burden to you? Be like, okay, like, like you just, just number that. Um, and then other thing too, resources. Okay. They got, they always have like Pinterest. Pinterest, I love Pinterest. So much fun. Find so many recipes. You can do trail box. There's so many of them. You can start one if you want. I always said I would, but I never did. Because <laughs> I have, I always have a lot of projects I don't start. But that's a fun product that I would applaud anyone who do that. Especially with Latino foods. I would love that. Latino voice uh, for a trail food blog. I would love that. If there is any out there, please let me know. Um, any friends, talk to friends, ask them about what they, anything. I, we're just going to talk to my food about my friend about cooking, dehydrating bacon. And we talked, we went back and forth with this. We were having a serious conversation about how does this work, sharing links. Like, this is what I saw. This is what I read. It was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> I know YouTube. YouTube, there's tons of content out there. And practice. Practice kind of help you get really good at this and makes you like learn more from this. So, um, and anyways, my favorite foods. I go down this, so that would be fun to share my favorite foods. Uh, I love tacos, beans and cheese, so good. I love tortilla salami and cheese. So I love that. And dehydrated ground beef and black beans. Love that too. But I love making my own mac and cheese, pasta and pasta sauce. It's so good. Like all the carbs, as you can tell, I love carbs. Really good for the trail. I love, um, I put frozen fruit blend. Obviously, I was really tired when I typed this up. <laughs> Dehydrated fruit blend, mangoes, strawberries, bananas, blueberries. I love strawberries and bananas that we have on the trail. I don't know why, but bananas made me taste like it's like ice cream. Maybe because it's like hot and I really want ice cream. But like, I don't know what's about it. And you can like, and, and other tip, like I said, for, for fruit, there um, is a way to help ensure, to make sure it lasts longer. And like, there's different things you can add on. I just like put lemon on it. Like that's the acid. I just douse it in lemon and it tastes really good. Um, you can do, I like cold instant oatmeal. It's really good. It's really weird. We can put it like full to the line in the bag so you don't have to like pour to anything. Fantastic. I like oat base bars too. I love tuna. My favorite new thing. I love like tuna with the cheese and cheddar crackers. It's like tuna on the crackers, like tuna and cheese. And it's really strange. It was really good, I swear. <laughs> I was like, my mind was blown. <laughs> like last week, I was like, woof. I love instant ramen, mashed potatoes, ramen bomb. It's mashed potatoes are always a class. I feel like you always have to throw that in there. It's like, what, like a, a dollar, two dollars. And you just, oh, I feel like that's like a staple. You should just, we just always carry one packet with us. Cause you never know what's gonna happen. Mashed potatoes on the trail sounds always sounds good. And bacon bits, you know, um, you can do that. We brought that too. Uh, you can make, oh, I have thing too. I've made a gluten-free, low FODMAP jerky. It's out there. Uh, we use coconut amino acid, coconut aminos instead of chiraki sauce. And it was, uh, oh, yeah, we used coconut aminos instead. Really, really, really good. My stomach was heavy. Um, and then I put Mexican first. Oh my goodness. Mexican rice. Oh, my, my eye was really tired. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I am laughing so hard. This is supposed to be fun, conversational, y'all. And I got uh, <laughs> palm dulce, la palm dulce, and cheese and tortillas. I love that together. So um, I'm like having a good time over here by myself. And then as a recap, we're, we're, this is the roadmap we have. It's getting close to time. Um, remember we talked about attention setting, mindfulness, prep for variations, types of backpacking food, dehydrated food, you do it yourself. So remember, this is all we went through in the past, like, 45 minutes. Thank you for following along. And then as a recap, I got mindfulness. I got refrigerator shelf life. Fat cannot be dehydrated. It's like a environment for mold. I got fat oxidation starts at room temperature, dietary food restrictions over that, time functionality. And then we went over this. Um, and then also uh, mindfulness. Uh, that's like a really, really big thing. Obviously, it's a really big thing. I'm reiterating this. Um, but these are questions you should always ask. Is there like, before you go starting out your food journey, um, <laughs> is there anything I need? Like when I'm gonna buy this, well, buy this year, meaning like anything for your backpacking food. Like, you know, cause always the thing I always ask, like what I'm gonna get for backpacking this year? What is my budget? 
you know, and um, like, it's like, that's something I should always ask, like, is this something like, you know, from this year, next year, if you want to get something for your goal to, to get dehydrated for next year, is my stove, stove and fuel permitted? Should ask that, do I have fuel for my stove? Like I said, that happened before. I was like, oh no, I don't have any fuel. Aria doesn't have any, but I called them. They were like, I got, we just got some. How many do you want? <laughs> you know, how many do you want me to hold? Like, they can hold your stuff, your fuel, but you should call if you don't have any and make sure they have it. Um, what are the fire restrictions? And what is the water availability? And do I have my California fire permit on me? Important thing, questions to ask before you go on. And then I have like recap about the food, cooking types, types of food, whenever all this was remembered. And then, and lastly, if you have questions, please ask for help. There's plenty of resources. You can even ask, like, go contact your, like, your ranger at the park for help, guidance, for permits, restrictions, and water report. Water report is also a key word. Water report. If you mention that, people should know what that means. Like, even Henry Co. They have a water report on their website. Um, and then, um, but you always ask for recommendations. Ask in person again if there's any uncertainty. Like I have done it before. I've gone in with Castle, with Castle State Rock Park regarding the water. I, I saw water and I actually went in person. I was like, there's water there. Like I saw that, well, I emailed them, I asked them. And then in person, I was like, tell me about the water source. Like, where, you know, is it easy to access? And they can give you some tips because sometimes Portola Redwoods, the, the creek is like way out there, way down there. Cause it was not much, didn't rain that much. It's a, it's a hike down there and they tell you. So you actually can like figure out, they can let you know like exactly where's the water source. And it might tell you, yeah, it's a hike down. Cause it was kind of hard to find for the Patola Redwoods, but like, and I'm glad I got that reference to hike down kind of deep in there. And it feels like you're going to, like, I always thought I'm going to get in trouble. I'm like, I wants to be here, but, but we found it with my friends. It was really nice, but luckily we asked the ranger about like, uh, I asked about it. It's always good to ask about that, especially when you're there and you're unsure. That's why they're there for, they're here to help you and any questions. And you can ask the five people hike there for Rexon provide suggestions, where to camp, ask about the water sources. Oh, asking friends, always so helpful. You can join a Facebook group too. There's like tons of Facebook groups out there and going specific like JMT or, um, or PCT, like for those, um, like there's like groups for that and there's like whole conversations about it. And um, and then that's how we found out information. And then you can download trail apps. And my favorite thing about it's like download trail apps for like all trails far out. Make sure to download that for far out guides. It's more for like popular trails and uh, the PCT and like um, they even have some smaller trails too. What's so cool about it, they actually have water sources on there. That's how I like was able to check. People like comment like there's water or it's dry. So you can actually plan out like it has to be campsites listed. So you actually can see like your campsite and like if there's water nearby um, and then people can comment if it's not. So that's also a really cool option if you're hiking somewhere, the popular trail and each like that version to, to get it's like it's like a eight dollars for like the like the was for the Sierra section or, or the anyways. So those are different things. Um, and thank you and for joining. And here's some we have some we can answer some questions and we have some giveaways. Yeah, thank you so much, Heather. I know that was a lot of information, but it was super, super helpful. And I really appreciate just the different perspectives and ideas that you shared about what backpacking meals can be. Um, I I have an air fryer and I have a dehydrator. It's like the, the multiple one. So I'm, I'm excited to try to learn how to dehydrate some things for sure in the near future. I haven't used it yet, um, but I'm going to be using some of your tips from from tonight to hopefully have some backpacking dehydrated meals of my own. Um, there was a question that came up. Uh, I'm showing it here. If you have any ideas for veggie friendly protein for backpacking. Cool. That's a that's a great question. Oh, like that's something that like I, I would think about like a, like what you what what you do to get all your protein for for that because like because i know like yeah i would use that and see i'm sure there's like, tons of recipes online that people need that for protein and see how you can um like or whatever you do you can see how you can dehydrate it because there's sometimes like you know with um with something i like i don't see it online i kind of like put together like okay i'm using this ingredient and this ingredient like how can i combine it and like guess the temperature in between and the hours um, but th that's a good question because 
that's really hard. Like the other, the only other thing I can say, it's not a, not the best question, but I'm sure you get a lot of like protein bars, but that's still like, that gets kind of tiresome. I'm trying to think, I know, I'm trying to think, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I've seen people take like a lot of like um, edamame, like ooh. And beans and like lentils. Oh, beans. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. duh. laughs> Use that yeah. for protein. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then rice and beans to combine is actually really good. It actually, um, I forgot the the nutrition science behind it, but it actually helps. It actually helps find, I'm sure you know about it uh, more than anyone about like how it's like better combined. But yeah, mm -hmm. beans, rice, cheese. That's something I would love to do. Be fantastic. Yeah, awesome. If, if you all have any more questions, feel please feel free to you know keep dropping them in in the comments, um, and we'll get to those. Yeah, I think that um, you know when considering again when considering for for backpacking, you're it could get a little overwhelming to to get everything in order from gears and permits and everything else that you might be needing um, for that trip. But again, like, I feel like food, I personally am always excited. And that's my first question. It's like, what are we going to eat? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. And so it's really nice to, to know that there are different ways that you can, uh, enjoy a meal out in, in the back country or when you're backpacking. And it's nice to know that there are lots of places that you can visit to buy food or make your own food. I personally have been like obsessed with Itacate. They're also a Latina owned uh, backpacking food um, that has like things like chilaquiles and and uh, lentejas and all of these yummy foods. And it doesn't have to be boring is what I'm trying to get at. You know, I'm seeing like our background screen here and it's yeah. so colorful and it's it looks so tasty and it's already almost dinner time and I'm, maybe I'm just really hungry. But food doesn't have to be boring. And I think that's what is really cool about learning dehydrating your own meal tips is that you can have some of your favorite food while you're out backpacking uh, if you're making it yourself as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that, that sounds all, that's all correct. And yeah, that's all true. And then um, all the food from it got there, it sounds delicious. And it sounds like it's protein packed too, which is awesome. Cause like mm -hmm. that like has what you need. So it's, it's awesome. I need, to, I need to try it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, well, I'm seeing just lots of thank yous from people in the comments, Heather. So just again, wanna show appreciation to you, to all of your knowledge. Um, and, you know, just let folks know that Heather also leads a lot of outings and events and backpacking trips in and around the Bay Area. So I'm showing a website here, let's go outside. You can find some more information about some of the outings and events that Heather, Heather has going on. Do you have any immediate things that you wanted to share with people? Um, not right now. Like I, I, I'm i like, have one that I'm kind of unsure of having, depending on the turnout. It's like for Angel Island, because I have a campsite booked on mid-September. So I was just like, do I, does anyone want to join or not? And I'm just, um, and because I just came on my backpacking trip, I'm like, am I too tired? But I was like, if there's enough interest, I, I'll continue to have it on, like, I think it's like September 15th on a Saturday. And it's just, and that's like a really like, like a, it's, it's like a one mile ba backpacking trip. And so that's like not that bad at all. So if that's anyone that's interested, uh, please let me know because I haven't pushed it as much because I've, I've been busy, but I am willing to host it still. Yeah, no, perfect. Well, yeah, definitely stay connected with Heather. Stay connected with Latino Outdoors events uh, in the Bay Area or all around the country. Uh, lots of fun activities coming up in celebration of our 10-year anniversary and just in general. Um, so again, just want to tell everyone thank you for, for tuning in and appreciate you all. Um, have a great rest of your evening and let's stay connected. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks.